Hello, welcome to another part of the building tool. In this part, I want to already test out my tool in Unreal and see what we need to do to have it working already. So in Unreal here, I'm just gonna grab my tool. I already have it open here, so just grab the tool. So we're just gonna probably see nothing. Um, also, of course, this is Unreal 5. Make sure you have like the engine and the plugin installed, things like that. So make sure that that is all working. So currently my tool here, I see I'm connected. Uh, I see I have, I have my manual in a moment. I might need to talk a bit about why some things are here like that. Uh, but mainly interested is the input system. So my tool doesn't have an input, so it doesn't know what to do. So we need to, of course, place a simple box or cube. So we're just gonna scale this up to a larger building like so. I usually also um, enable the hidden, uh, so here, uh, hidden in game. So whenever I type G, I will uh, hit that, or we can always just like hide it here as well. So what I will do now is let me here say input, a world outliner, and we're going to now link the box to my tool. So we're going to say start selection, select the box, and use as my selection. And as you can see, now it will input that. So I will probably have to hide my cube here. And it will, we will just have this result. And if you take a closer look, there are some weird things happening. And there is definitely a reason for that. So if you would take a look at our uh, topology of the cube, we don't necessarily have like a clean uh, basic topology. Like there are like, for example, here, the lines in the middle. And as well here, like the lines on the side, so it has like been subdivided. Uh, so we need to get rid of that. So that's what is currently happening and, and might cause issues here. So into Houdini, into our system here, where we calculate everything, we want to, of course, place the flatten edges node. So flatten the edges. And this will basically remove any type of geometry on flat surfaces. So let's... Uh, here, redirect the lines. So for example, if I would do a subdivision here and use the weight value here, so we have a similar cube like we had in Unreal, it will actually now remove that, as you can see, it will remove that subdivision step sort of, even if we also would um, turn this into like triangles, we will also again here we have the triangle version. It will just remove that into like flat spaces. So here with the tool, we're just gonna now, of course, hit save. Then into uh, Unreal, we're gonna click on the Houdini tool. We're gonna go here to rebuild. And in a moment, we will then have a other result. So now we have like this black cube or squares here, expect like expected. So the only thing now here is that where are actually my building blocks? And the reason for that is it's currently using pattern generic. So if you remember, we had like multiple patterns. So make sure you're, you're typing them correctly. So mine was, for example, base wall. And base wall were these windows. So as you can see with these windows over here, maybe I switch to another viewing mode. So if I now go back to my cube, and play around here maybe with the scale. We can see that we can now start to build uh, a building shape. So this sort of like works all fine and great. One of the downsides of this, I would say, is that we are now also, if we are looking actually at our output values, we are now making new geometry. We are actually making these models again, new into Unreal. So what we can do is we can also go with an instancing approach, which is what we used and which is often, of course, preferred is to use instancing. So here already, like I have a bunch of uh, models, like here I have models like so, I have a bunch of these models here ready to go. And I'm gonna use these models. So actually the models that I'm using here are for example, like this one here, like this model. So how can I now use this model with instancing? 
there are a couple ways of doing this. In this video, I'm going to keep it quite simple, uh, but I will in another video show you how to use data tables. And with data tables, it will become a lot more interesting than what I will show you here. So to get this model and in instancing along this building, I of course need to have a representation of this model inside of Houdini. So what is important of that, what is important with that is of course the dimensions of this. So here we have approximate size and we're going to basically look at the two last values. So this is the length and then this is the, the height. So we have a 225 units by 360 units in the height. So that's a very important number to remember. So when I jump into Houdini, I actually imported the, the exact same model that I'm using, of course, into Unreal. And if I would check the dimensions here, uh, so we have the 200, we have the 360 units in the height, and we have also like the 225 in the length over here. What is important here is I'm actually downscaling this model by 100 in difference because there is a 100 units difference between Houdini and Unreal. That's very important, of course, for our tool to know. So our actually Houdini will see 2.25 uh, and also, of course, 3.6. Um, so in case you are not able to import your models, you can also just, like I did before, uh, you can just spawn my basic grid and then you just say, 2.25 for example and then uh, 3.6 for example like this is then a placeholder for uh, the model that I had here. So what I'm going to do now is since I'm only going to work uh, for a moment here with model A uh, let's maybe make a simple floor that uh, only uses model A so I'm going to overwrite uh, this thing to only use model A and what we need to do is we also need to say where is this located. So if I would now go to my tool, um, maybe here we need to also for a moment, let's say to use base wall. And now we are only again using that single model. So instead of now using the output here, the actual geometry output, we are going to using the second output, which is then the points. So we are going to send the point data or point clouds into Unreal. Now, the thing with that is each point needs to hold the location. What model do I need to use? So we need to store a instance value. Where is the model that you would like to see on the point? We're going to first of all here go to your models. So in this case, it's this model. And I'm going to right click and we want to get a copy of the reference. So we will basically copy the location where this is stored in my uh, project, which is, will basically be the content building tool, meshes, and then this folder. Now back into Houdini, we now have this path copied and we go on to paste it over here. So we'll create a new node here. So create a new attribute. And we are going to use something which is called Unreal Instance. Make sure you type this correctly because the tool will recognize this. And then we want to change this from a float to a string. And now we're going to copy paste to control V the path. So again, like this is holding where the mesh is being stored. So with that now here available, we are now adding, we are just basically now adding more interesting data to this model. So the building tool knows how large this piece is. It knows that it, that this model is called A and also knows what model to use in Unreal. Now, coming back to the building tool, going back to the settings, we also want to now here enable when we use point cloud output, we want to also get instance from patterns. So when you enable this, it will automatically look for the Unreal instance value. So it will automatically do that for you. So if I look now at my output, we will now here have something which is called here Unreal Instancing. So here again, it just holds the location to where the model is. So we are basically done to test it out a bit more. So we're going to go here and say save out and test. Then into Houdin, then into Unreal, we're going to go back to my tool and we're going to here go rebuild. And now we should be able to get instances. So we now, as you can see, have these building shapes. So they are placed in like this very weird position. And we might need to do a couple of tweaks 
coordinate. So they are all facing the same direction, which means that there might be something wrong with the actual input. So here, when we are inputting a cube from Unreal, we might want to do a clean pass on it. So there might be data coming from Unreal that we don't need or is actually conflicting with my building tool. So we're just going to hit the clean note and we're going to here hit clean attributes. And we're going to plug it like so. And we're going to test and save out to see if it makes a difference. So we're going to go back, hit rebuild, and let's see if we have an actual result. And that actually did the trick. So as you can see, sometimes when you get data, send data from Unreal to Houdini, you might need to do some cleanup before we can actually use all of the data. So now we have the result that we want. So we have our actual building pieces, as you can see. Of course, we can start to improve on this. So as you know, uh, I also had like this, this window, this smaller version, and we can basically do the same thing as right clicking and getting a reference. Then in Houdini here, we are going to just copy paste the instancing node, and we are going to overwrite here the value. And now I can actually build my pattern back up. So here I had uh, the B here. So place model B, place model B, like so. And we can just hit save. We're going to rebuild our tool back into Unreal. And as you can see, now we are placing this model, this smaller window here on the side. Before I end up this video, about one more thing, and that is here the group value that we have here. So you might notice that we have like different building styles and that we have a group and a pattern. So we can actually define where to add different styles to different cubes. So here, if we click on this, we have like this weird menu. Uh, so we want to maybe change this so it actually makes a bit more sense here. So here in inside of Houdini, we want to open back our menu like so. We want to then uh, click on the group and I'm going to change this to tags. So this naming is now text and, I'm, and I will actually read uh, text from Unreal. We also here have the menu enabled. So if I, for example, disable this and press apply, we will now have a different menu. So here, if I would now go back and rebuild, uh, you will see that now I don't have like the add name here or that drop down anymore. So what I will do is let's here grab a couple of our cubes. So here I have cube one and two. So we're going to now use the tag system. So somewhere here in this menu, we have a tag option. Maybe I just type it here. So tags, and we can now here add a tag component. So we're going to here add tag, and this is called A. And this other cube, for example, is then called B. Um, you can, of course, give those other names. I'm just going to call it A and B. Now, going back to my tool, we can now use this information. Uh, so here, let's say I want to input both of the cubes, first of all, so everything inputs. And now I'm going to hold shift to select another cube and use a selection. So now both of these cubes are seen as inputs. So we are now just creating these buildings. And now let's use the tags here in this menu. Uh, there might be a chance that you need to rebuild uh, because you need to re refresh sort of like the input data. Um, and then usually when we just type in A, we should now see that box uh, A with the tag A only have that building style. So I can now add another building style. Uh, so it's called generic. So we're going to call this B and building style B. It will be... Uh, that other pattern that I had, which, which I think was called floor two. And as you can see, like this is then floor two, which has like a different uh, building approach. As you can see, like we have the small window and then the big window. And if you just have put big windows. So that is how we can quickly sort of like uh, apply different styles over different buildings. So the advantage of this is that instead of using like multiple tools or, or like a, a tool per building, we can actually just have one tool that controls, for example, 10, 20 buildings on how they look. And we can just say with the tag system, for example, A and B, you can of course give this different names. Uh, we can quickly assign different styles or patterns on these buildings. 
that's like a very cool thing you can do with the tool as well. So that was it for this video. So I showed you how we can use the tool quickly here in Unreal, and I showed you how we can prepare the instancing data to make sure we are instancing the model instead of like making new geometry all the time. So I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.